hi there! In this video, I played against a second Duolingo bot called Junior and I tried to explain every move I made. During the match, I also talked about the Kings Indian defense, cheap tricks, and you can also see how I punished the bot quickly for its poor play without letting it have any counterplay. Our next opponent is Junior, 700 rated Junior from Duolingo, is his third grade chess class foremost expert on chess, frogs, and anything that contains sugar. <laughs> okay, I play as, let's play with black. Okay. Just because I'm a little kid doesn't mean I won't wipe the floor with you. Whoa, how rude. We should teach some manners to this kid. Did you know frogs live on every continent except Antarctica? I'm never going there. <laughs> okay, he played d4. We are going for knight f6, king's indian. Let's play the king's indian. Okay, c4. I just got a brand new book about frogs and it has so many cool facts. My dad always says I should play sports. I think chess counts. It does, it does, junior. Okay, g6 is the next move. We want to develop the bishop to g7 in the king's indian. And again, we want to fianchetto our bishop over there. Okay, so g6. Anyone who thinks chess isn't a sport should check out this game because I'm running circles around you. I might be little, but I can play a bigger game than you. Okay. I started to become scared at this point. Okay, bishop g7, we want to continue putting the bishop over there. Uh, so we can castle fast and crush him. Okay, bishop g7. I am short, but you would better not overlook me. Bullfrogs will eat everything from turtles to bats for breakfast. I just did chess opponent. <laughs> He's also trash talking. My opponent played e4, we are playing the king's indian and the idea is that now they control the, the center. center with these pawns and next move could be e5, which is a bit scary, let's be honest, so I want to play d6. In the king's indian, whenever your opponent plays e4, just respond them with d6. So once they play it, you can take it. Okay, d6. We prevent this move, plus we have a little bit more control in the center, plus we can help uh, our position with either e5 or c5 in the future. We will see. Did you know that some frogs have butts that look like ours? But <laughs> um, I'm not sure it's a fact I wanted to know. My frog, Sugar, tried to eat the bishop one time. <laughs> so, bishop e2. We should continue with castling because we are not sure if we want to play e uh, e5 or c5. Maybe we will want to play knight c6 uh, in the future, but knight c6 now doesn't work because of uh, d5. So, there is one move that is for sure will happen and that's why we should play that fast. Uh, first, not fast. First. Uh, castling because for sure we will want to castle this side so let's do that the only thing grosser than your chest strategy is the fact that frogs will shed their own skin and then eat it goliath frogs can weight up to seven pounds which is almost as much as a horse <laughs> he keeps saying facts i didn't want to know Okay, knight f3. We should continue with our usual strategy in the king's indian, which is e5. We will want to play e5. It might look like we are losing a pawn because it's hanging. I mean, seemingly it's hanging because there are two pieces attacking uh, the, D the e5 square and we are only defending it with one pawn. But in this case, e5 is a good move because if pawn takes... We can recapture with the pawn and if the knight takes uh then we can take the queen first and then play um uh, or we don't have to take the queen even we can even take on e4 knight takes e4 which again looks like a crazy move but the knight is hanging on e5 because of the bishop and yes we lose a piece but we capture a piece also and the position opens up for our bishop on g7, so it will be a very satisfied bishop on g7, a monster bishop. Okay, let's see how he likes that. e5, boom. Okay, d5, that's a bit sad because we wanted to move the knight to c6 and once he would play d5, we would move it to e7. So now we have no choice but to bring it to d7, if I remember right, but I need to refresh my... 
King's Indian uh, opening uh, repertoire, yes. Ribbit, ribbit. Did you know a group of frogs is called an army? That's what you need to beat me. <laughs> so let's continue with the development. We don't want to bring the bishop out yet because this could be our star bishop in the King's Indian. Often this is our star bishop because often we can use it to sacrifice it. Uh, for a sacrifice, maybe on h3. We will see. Not, I mean, not in this case, but when they play h3, pawn h3. That is often the case. When they castle this side, that's also a little detail, right? But not immediately. First, we need to prepare. So that's why I don't want to develop this bishop yet. But I want to develop this knight, which could go to c5, pressure uh, the e4 pawn a little bit. Um, yeah, so I think I like that. It could also be a5 and knight a6 first, wanting to go from there. a5 is often used uh, when we put a knight on c5, so there is no b4 move by the opponent. So that's what I'm thinking about. Because if we go to d7, mm, we could go there. These are the two moves I'm considering right now. I like knight d7 better. Let's play that. Knight d7. Did you know horses only need four hours of sleep per day? The bishop's rampage would be a good title for an action movie. <laughs> okay, bishop went to g5. Knight f6 to d7, then f5. Uh, yes, but keep in mind the king still haven't, uh, hasn't castled yet. And if we played knight d7 in the previous move with the f6 knight and went for f5, they might... They, they would maybe castle long and then we would just open our king's side and invite the white pieces in. Um, bishop went there. I think the move is h6 because we want to kick this bishop. White, I think, wants to play bishop g5. Um, well, they played already bishop g5 and then queen d2 and castle long. I'm thinking about playing h6 to ask this bishop what it wants. Because also with queen d2, they can often play bishop h6, which is not a move I like that much. So I really want to play h6, just to ask this bishop what it's doing. Have you ever considered that if you play too hard against me, it might create lasting childhood trauma that forces me to give up chess forever? Did you not see that move coming because old people have bad eyesight? Did he call me old? Yeah, so someone mentioned a6. I don't think I want to play a6 because I'm not scared of knight b5 yet. What is that knight b5? I don't think that works. I think I will just play knight c5, but there could be b4. So maybe that's why I want to play a5 first, not to allow b4 and then put a knight to c5 because it looks like after b4 we could take on e4, but we can't really because there is a pin here and if and the knight could just recapture without any trouble and we lose a piece i don't want to lose a piece chat uh, i'm materialistic so we could play a5 and then play knight c5 i think i like that okay let's do that can we hurry this up there is a frog documentary coming on soon Ah, oh, nuts. If we play any slower, I will have to go to bed without dessert. <laughs> they, they are calling me out on my time management. I feel attacked, chat. So, uh, let's hurry this up because the poor chat has a documentary to watch. So, night, night c5. We are still not threatening the c4 pawn, but after g5... We, ha we have this hidden threat. We want to play g5 and then take on e4 if white is not so careful. So let's play knight c5. Frogs can survive anywhere from the rainforest to frozen tundras. It's true. The situation you are in is stickier than a frog's skin. <laughs> well, poor junior played b4 anyways. Well, that's just a free pawn. We can just take it. There is nothing to explain here. There is no threat after that. When your opponent offers you a free piece, still try to see if there is a forcing move after uh, you accept the sacrifice. That's why we played a5, because if we didn't and we played a6 and now b4 came, we would have to retreat. And we lost 
to Tempe actually, because we went there and we had to go back. So that would be really sad. Come on, it's not nice to beat up on a little kid. I once played the trick on my dad and made him step on the pointy end of a bishop. He went to the hospital. Bishop went back there. That makes no sense. We can just ca uh, capture this horse. It's free. Um, why is threatening nothing? So let's just take it. It's a free horsey. Why not? You can take my knight, but can I at least keep the armor? They say if you kiss a frog, it turns into a prince. But what do you have to kiss to get a queen? Queen C2. <laughs> now we can just take this pawn. It's a free pawn. I'm not sure which knight should take it. Maybe this one. Because now this knight has an outpost. It cannot be kicked by a pawn. And this knight is not doing anything. So I prefer to take it with this. Plus we prepare f5 or bishop f5. We will see which one we want to play later. Junior did not take our c3 pawn. So now we say you can't take it anymore. Let's take that. Plus we are a piece up. So queen b1, which makes no sense, in my opinion. If you can't make this move, do you even count as an adult? I might be smaller than you, but my brain is bigger. Whoa. Wow, that's a bit rude. That's a bit rude. I would never say such things as a child. Or I would like to think I, I was a... I was a polite child. <laughs> I'm not sure if I want to play f5 or just play bishop c5. Bishop, uh, not c5, bishop f5, sorry, to set up a trap. But that might be a little bit too cheap. This is what I consider before going for a cheap trick. This is how you can uh, identify cheap tricks if it is really worth it to make them. So one thing. When you make a trick, always assume your opponent will see it. Always assume your opponent sees what you are trying to do. And if you still like the move, if they don't fall into the trap, then your move will be good and it won't be a cheap trick. But if you make a move thinking, ah, my opponent will for sure blunder it, then they don't. And then your move doesn't make any sense. Then it wasn't really worth it. No, respect your opponent, always assume they see what you what you want to do. And if you still like your move, go for it. I'm not sure I like bishop f5. Probably it's a fine move because we had a piece up, so everything could make sense. As a King's Indian player, I want to play f5 because I want to threaten f4, g5 and go with these pawns. But probably I don't have to be that risky anymore opening my king's position because I don't have to make risks anymore. This is another thing. We are a piece up. We don't have to do risky stuff anymore. We can just play naturally. So actually maybe bishop f5 is the move I'm playing. Yeah, let's play bishop f5. Four on d2 doesn't exist because the knight is defending it. So we would just exchange uh, knights, which is fine. Which is fine because we want to simplify the position, but... I'm not sure I want to put my pawn on d2 because it will be lost. On c3 it's very well defended. I also like bishop g4. Yeah, that's also good. Um, we could do it. Just once we take it, and let's say our opponent doesn't blunder it and they move the rook away somewhere, and we capture bishop takes, um, then we have to move, a, move with our knight. Maybe then we can play f5. Both are fine, I think. I personally prefer bishop f5 because I feel like the bishop could be more useful on this diagonal if they don't fall for this cheap trick uh, than on g4. Although we can simplify there. Both are fine. I personally prefer bishop f5. Uh, that's why I will play that. But bishop g4 is an equally good move. My opponent blundered this discovery. I like making discoveries because it's really... Hard to see them as a beginner. Um, look, higher rated players learn that discoveries, potential discoveries are threatening. You have to treat this move like I'm threatening your queen, almost. We have more than uh, two pieces on the same line and therefore there can be a tactic. We can just take this pishy for free. Well, this is a free queen, isn't it? So let's not over explain it. Free queen, we take it. There is no threat from our opponent. We have to make sure of that before taking the queen, but there is no nothing to worry about. So we take there. Cool. 
Okay, so the rook captured. What is what is he saying? Yeah, yeah. The little Kate made a mistake. I could see this move blindfolded. I have heard this before. So what can we do now? We can do anything. We are a queen up. I'm really tempted to push this pawn because that would open up the diagonal, and after that we could play c2. Uh, so again, another collinearity from Maurice Ashley's book again, what we learned, we have more pieces. So therefore we have to think if there is more pieces on one line. So now we have to think if there is any tactics on that, uh, there are any tactics on, on that line. And once we push this, the knight will have to move away and then we can push c2 and the rook is quite trapped over there. So we will do that, e4. According to a new survey, 50% of the people playing in this match think I am the better player. <laughs> this move is so easy, a six-year-old could do it. If uh, we played c2 first, I guess it's the same thing. Yeah, I don't see any difference, to be honest. So c2, let's play c2, attacking there. Okay, that's it. I'm going to stop playing nice. I like playing against my pet frog, Sugar, but you make the pieces, pieces less slimy. <laughs> We can even give this bishop d4 check now, which would again make a lot of sense, just to weaken the king a little bit, to make it move more to the side, uh, bring another piece in potentially. Anything, anything works to be honest. So now we can decide, by the way, what we want. Um, bishop d4, by the way, is something that I'm not sure I would play here, but we are up a whole queen a whole queen so anything works whatever is closer to your taste just my taste is more like taking one of the rooks and well of course chat if we have to pick between the rooks which one do we take i don't want to hear bishop takes a1 no c takes b1 that's a free rook this way we would just if we captured with the bishop that would just give extra material to to white which we don't want so we're gonna take here and promote to a queen okay <laughs> um i prefer it this way so i'm going this way because now i can bring a rook here to the second rank and rooks on the second rank make a lot of sense right so we have a, an attacker here and then we can bring the queen over so rook takes rook takes a2 i like that we attack over here okay what is he saying do other grown-ups know you are bullying a little kid oh hey King Jr. He noticed I'm bullying him. Chat, just to clarify things in case this is not clear. Once we take this and it doesn't matter what we promote to, we are giving a pawn for the rook. Not a queen, not a knight, not a rook. So they won't have a queen more. No, don't worry about it. You are giving a pawn for this rook. Just in case I mentioned this in case it wasn't clear. Uh, and it's better to promote to a queen. Come on, let's be serious, chat. You know, you don't have to play the same way I'm playing. We are a queen up and the rook up. You can do whatever you want. So, king moved away. Now we can just capture this bishop because, not because we want more material, that's just secondary, but we want to bring the rook closer to the action and attack the king better. Don't worry, chat, here I won't bully the poor kid until he loses all his material. I will capture this bishop regardless of what you say. Yes, we can capture king goes there and then there is bishop d4 checkmate in two moves. So, well, for sure I will capture here because it comes with tempo. And we can just keep attacking this king, yes. The evil queen is on the move. I may be a little kid, but you don't need to make it this easy on me. <laughs> I'm not even making it easy on you. Okay, so let's finish this game. Bishop d4. Okay, so let's bring this queen in. From this side, not from this side, because our rook is hanging, chat. So let's bring this in. Queen f2. Checkmate. What does he have to say? You may have won this game, but I bet I have got more XP on Duolingo. <laughs> I'm actually not sure. My Duolingo is going, going well. <laughs> let's see the game review so we didn't make any mistakes inaccuracies or mistakes look 
We have zero, zero, zero. Wait, you don't see it yet. There we go. You see? We didn't make any mistakes. And our accuracy is 99.3. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe and even like the video. Thank you for watching. See you next time.